And so for week number four, we not only have his amazing wife, Tracy, but we have the eight-time All-Star, four-time World Series champ, baseball legend. Can you welcome to the stage, Hope City, Daryl and Tracy Strawberry. Let's go. I'm glad you're next to me. And then look at your second choice and say, I, I thought you could sing a little bit better than that. I just, I had a feeling. So Man, insult your I neighbor right wrong. out of the gate wrong. this morning. Please, oh please. <laughs> We are so excited for what the Lord is ministering in this series. It has been such a blessing, but we are so grateful to have the so two grateful. of you today. It is going to be awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. I, I wish I could sing too and preach, man. <laughs> I didn't get that gift. <laughs> It's good to see you, bro. Give you some lessons. We can work. I don't want to take lessons. I don't think so, <laughs> Pastor. I don't think so. Everybody just stay in their lane. It's okay. Yeah, everybody stay in their lane. That would okay. preach real good. It's for the best. That's a good. We, we could talk the whole time about that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And you come from the era of, and I'm going to step on some of our, uh, our new generation of sports fans, but you come from the era where Jordan was the GOAT, still the GOAT. Amen. Yes. Amen. And you are one of the greatest baseball players who have ever, ever played the game. And so the era of sports heroes, uh, it's just really special. And so I grew up, uh, I'm fangirling a little bit. I grew up, uh, it was like, I'm like, it'd be funny if I'm like, and can you sign this? Um, but we met years ago and our common connection was the foundation of Jesus and the redemptive power of his spirit and how he literally took us from nothing to something from rejected to accepted, how he made a night and day difference. And I love y'all's story. By the way, they're also sharing the weekend with us because last night we had dinner with them on their 16th wedding anniversary. So not only are they with us for our relationship series, but we also get to spend time with them on their anniversary weekend, which is special. Our honor for sure. They are so, so kind to be here. So I pray that you all receive even more because they have been doing this for 16 years and it is an incredible gift. And we have had the privilege in this series of being able to walk through the different mm -hmm. phases of, of relationships. So whether you are in the room, whether you are at another location, whether you're watching online and you would say, I'm in a single season or whether you're in a married season or whether whether you are in a divorce season, whatever season you are in, how many of you would say we all function within relationships at some point in our lives? Amen? Amen. 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 Well, in being in relationships, sometimes we have to walk through the battles and the struggles of those that we're in relationship with, right? And some of y'all would be able to say, y'all don't have to lift your hands, but some might be able to say, I've walked through a great deal of pain in relationships. Maybe not my own doing, maybe someone else is doing, but how many of you know that there is great redemption in the story that the Lord redeems? Amen? Love it. Amen. And your story matters. So we wanna, we wanna just kind of do interview style and kind of hear y'all's testimony and your story. One of my favorite verses, Revelation 12, 11, talks about how the blood of the Lamb is the word of your testimony. And I know we talked last night at dinner how your story matters, whether it's squeaky clean and it's perfect and polished and you only watch Fireproof and listen to Christian music and you're like, everything has been why I was born with a Bible in my hand. Or it's the opposite and it's a miracle you're even alive today. Where's all the never should have made it's at? Like, you know, look at this. Right, and, and you're, you're breathing, which is still proof that God is not done, but I love the redemptive story of God's grace for every goof up, mercy for every mistake, and just what y'all were sharing with us, the kindness of God in your lives. So can y'all share, um, it's gonna be powerful. Lean in, take down notes, but share your story. Just give us a snapshot of where y'all have been. All right, I'll start off. I love to start off, you know, because, um, you know, we met in, we met through recovery. My wife had um, one year recovery um, clean, and, and um, I was just coming in off a five-day run, you know, a binge, you know, smoking crack, shooting dope, and, you know, it wasn't love at first sight. It was brokenness at first sight, you know. It was lust at first sight, you know. And well, what a lot of things that we do and, you know, where we come from, you know, is where you come from. I came from a broken home, you know, just because I put on a baseball uniform didn't make me a man. 
It just made me a baseball player. And so I came from a broken home. My dad was a raging alcoholic and uh, used to beat the cr living crap out of me and tell me I wouldn't amount to anything. So my pain led me to my greatness. My greatness would eventually lead me to my destructive behavior. Wow. Because brokenness is real on the inside. You know, not, not what we look like on the outside. People always project what we look on the outside because everybody projected because of what I looked like on the outside. And I played Major League Baseball and I was successful. I should have it all together. You know, I was, you know, I was a heathen. I was a womanizer, alcoholic, drug addict, center, privileged, lived behind community gates, saved by grace. Eventually, you know, after going through all the process that I had to go through and I came to this place where I was just so lost and you know, and that's when me and Tracy met you know she met me in my whole dysfunction because I came from a dysfunction home you know so you know we don't want to always we always want to pretend like we come from this white picket fence I said there's no white picket fence everybody got some stuff you know <laughs> right. And, you know, I had, a, I had a lot of junk in my trunk. Even though I was hitting home runs and running around the bases, I still was broken. People need to understand that. Money does not make you well. It just makes you live better and makes you, allows you to buy more stuff and have more stuff. So You even talked last night about how the mountaintop is one of the loneliest places. Oh, my God. Yes. You know, you, everybody's searching to get up to the mountaintop. There's nothing there. You know? There's a lot of people that just want to be around you because of who you are and what you have and what you do. But at the end of the day, they're really not friends. You know, those are just people you end up hanging out with and dealing with and everything. And then, you know, when there's nothing there, after you are done and you don't have anything, where is everybody else? They're gone. You know, they're gone about their business. And so those are really not friends. Those are just people you associate yourself with. You know, so it wasn't until, you know, my wife, you know, ended up leading me back into church, you know, after many years of, you know, living a lifestyle separated from God. And, and that's when I really got the revelation. I want people to understand this, too. You know, it's not an overnight miracle. Sure. Yeah. You know, you didn't get in that mess overnight, you ain't getting out of it overnight. You know, it's a process. You know, and I went through the whole process of sitting. You know, I had to be discipled because I got saved. Like most people, we get saved, then what's next? Most people will be like me, they'll miss the discipleship. I miss the discipleship. So, you know, like the Bible said, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And there's no knowledge and understanding, so we perish and we go back. Yep. And I just remember playing, and I ran into the wall and dislocated my shoulder at Dodger Stadium, and they patted it the next day. I was like, you guys are a day too late. <laughs> <laughs> So all this was around my career and everything when I was going through the ups and downs and, and then Tracy comes into my life and lead me back into church. And I sit for seven years. God sat me for seven years before he equipped me because I, I realized that he knew that I had done it all. I had seen everything, been to the mountain, been to the top championships, stuff. But he wanted to equip me with the biblical principles so that when he sends you, that you equip, yes. that you won't be destroyed yes. by the enemy. Because yes. so many of us get destroyed by the enemy because we never experience little, little notoriety and you know, people grabbing at you. And if you never experience that, that's a hard place to be because then you all, all of a sudden you think it's about you. And I realized it wasn't about me. I realized it was about what God wanted to do through me. So Guys, listen to this. When God gives you a woman that loves Jesus, Come on. follow her. <laughs> She'll take you to the right place. I'm telling you right now. It's the most important thing to know. <laughs> and I love, you said something right there that I think is key in that waiting. Aside from so, the follow the good woman, that, yeah. part was, that part was key as well. That's very key. <laughs> but after, before that. <laughs> you, talk, you talked about that waiting season, and the truth is you can't microwave spiritual maturity. Like we have such a quick fix, quick affirmation, I want it done my way sort of mentality that that waiting was necessary because where God has y'all now, uh, New York Times bestselling author, an evangelist traveling around romancing people to Jesus, he needed your character to be able to keep you here. Yeah, yeah. Because that's key. Sometimes God says, hey, I want to release something through you, but you haven't yet received what you need from me, the tools, the weaponry for your character to keep you good. here. That's really good because he has to develop the right character in you yeah. um, so you can be able to go out and be able to stand firm, just like that song was saying, you know, being able to stand firm Did on you your... sing it? I can't sing it. Okay, I was just checking. No, you, you, said, you almost did. You were like, yeah, it's like that song, did. Stand Firm. I almost lost my head there. Yeah, you know, sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure... <laughs> 
I'm just checking. But to be able to stand firm, you know, you have to be able to stand firm in a society that's full of darkness. And I think people don't understand that. If you don't have a firm foundation in Christ, sure. you're going to fall for everything that you see on TikTok, her talk, and that talk. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, that's the reality of it, you know, because this is what happens to so many people, and they get consumed with what's going on on the Internet and social media, and they believe all that hype instead of standing in the biblical principles and living according to the Word of God. That's a good word. Come on. Somebody should give God praise. Amen. I love, I love your perspective, Daryl, though, because I think so often in life we, we live life with this goal and anticipation that if I just have more, I'll be happy. If I could just have more success, I'd be happy. If I could just have more money, I would really be happy. I mean, we'd be happier in our relationship if I just have more money. And Daryl's testimony is an incredible testimony of you can have everything the world has to offer. He had every ounce of success. He had all the money he could want. He had every door opened to him. And like he said, when he got there, he was still alone. And he made bad choices in the midst of that, in the midst of that brokenness, in the midst of that pain, because the thing he thought he was seeking was not the thing he needed. The thing he needed was Jesus. And the second part, you can clap, that's an that's, amen. That's, that's the number one part. The second part of that transformation for him was not only had he been through this journey, but Tracy herself had been through an incredible journey. And in that, God had given them such revelation to stand together in relationship. Tracy, do you want to share story, a little? Your story, you told us last night, I mean, maybe give us a snapshot. It, it was incredible what God has done. Well, God created us to love and to be loved. So there's a desire in each and every person because God imparted that into us. Relationships is his favorite thing. That's why Jesus came to die that we may be reconciled to the Father. So it drives us. And not understanding that being young, when I was younger, I was raised with parents, God bless you, honey, that loved me, had every opportunity, raised me the right way, and they were teaching me about God. They were the living illustration and example of who God is. That's somebody's word right there. You have children. We are the living example of who God is and how he expresses himself, the characteristics and nature of God. And I was being raised up in that. And then I was molested by a neighbor when I was eight years old. So then there was a conflict. You have seeds that are sown on both sides, godly seeds, seeds of love, seeds that the Father in heaven intended and planned on having sown. But then you have the seeds of darkness, the afflictions, the assignments of the enemy that come in and they take root. And not understanding that these things have a profound effect on your world. At eight years old, there was a break. There was confusion. I'm loving Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I'm being loved at home. And then I walk across the yard, and this evil happens. Wow. So now I'm confused. Well, how can Jesus love me? And he protects the little children. And at eight years old, what do you do with that? Wow. So there's nothing you can do with that. Now there's a secret. Now there's this seed. And I don't know what to do with that. So now I start to try to reproduce without even knowing it because God wired us to heal. God wired us to be restored. God wired us to be able to withstand anything to come into our hearts and to heal us and make us whole. But at eight years old, I don't know to chase that. I'm afraid to tell my parents because he's threatening that this is going to happen, that's going to happen. So I go on my own trajectory of acceptance and looking for relief and looking for release. So now I'm hanging around older boys. Now I'm drinking at 10 and 11 years old. Don't understand what's happening to me. Why am I like this? that light and that darkness, a raging war that goes on yeah. and then being lost in darkness and addiction for so many years, trying, well, I'll get married. I'll try to duplicate what my parents have. Maybe that'll fix it. Again, chasing, whether it's money, what are we chasing? Yeah. But that character, Pastor, like you were saying, there's a big difference. The desire to love is a given, but there's a big difference in the desire to love, which everyone has, and the ability to love. So, good. 
So what happens is when we don't have the character, number one, Christ-like character, the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, also wounds, unhealed wounds. We make each other pay for the wounds of the past, many times not even realizing that's what's happening. And a lot of times, that's so. can we all just agree that Daryl married way out of his league? Can we just do that now? Can we just say that publicly? This, this is what I live daily. People are always like, well, wait a minute, y'all are together? <laughs> Anyways. Um, keep going, keep going. But sometimes, and I think that's so key, because if you don't get healed from it, you'll bleed on people that didn't cut you. Right. And you have to allow the Spirit of God to put stitches where you've just been putting Band-Aids with alcohol or uh, prescription drug issues or running to things that you know are toxic, but it's the only thing that fills the void. And so keep going. Well, in filling that void yeah. is when I used the substance, certain substances, I felt strong. I was like superwoman. I'm like, oh, I want to be this woman because it took me away from my struggle and my torment and my torture. So it takes you out of the re reality that you're in and it places you in this false position false thinking, false pretense, the torment is gone, I get to check out, I can live like this, and not chasing healing or wholeness and not knowing how to do that, you're gonna chase anything because God wired us to have relief so and good. restoration, it's very dangerous. So good, I love that though, what you said, because I think so often we don't realize we're living under false pretenses. I think so often we get into this rhythm of I'm okay, I'm okay, mm -hmm. this feels good enough. Eight. I'm okay, I'm okay. But you have not yet surrendered where the brokenness really is. So you are not fully able to live in the truth, in the light of the truth, in the light of the healing that Christ provided for us. That's so powerful. And it's very powerful because that light, it, the old saying is true and it comes right out of the Bible. You know, love your neighbors, you love yourself. Well, when you're not loving yourself, again, you're incapable of loving another and making each other pay that price. And Daryl now is the strongest, Come on. most powerful man of God. I am the most blessed woman <laughs> to be married to this man. You know, God does a mighty work. And I am honored to be his wife. And we're a perfect team and a perfect pair. But that's the redemption story. That's what God can do because it wasn't always that way. And it's so cool because... <laughs> I'm just saying. And watching, you know, there's these sticky statements that are tweetable and Instagrammable that say there's enough grace for every goof up and mercy for every mistake. We preach these. But to watch how God's grace restored your blended family, you have, what, nine kids between the two of you, to see how God has restored relationships with your kids, that at one point, y'all didn't have conversations because of decisions and, and choices that were being made. So to see how God has brought all that back around, we talk about patterns. Jackie's brilliant. She has her master's degree in counseling and all that stuff. She, if I talk to her for too long, she sends me an invoice. I'm like, do I have to pay? I have to pay this? And she's I'll like, shopping. she's like, lay down. I'm like, why am I laying down? She's like, how do you feel today? I'm like, what is happening? Um, but there are these patterns that we get in. It's like, I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm good. I feel, I feel, how did I get back here? I thought I, I thought I overcame that 10 years ago. I'm doing really good. I got relationships healthy. I've got joy. How did I get back here? And there are these patterns. But when you allow the Spirit of God to break the patterns, we talked about the work that it took to get that, that family dynamic back healed again. And you said something last night. You said it took work, but the work was worth it. And maybe there's some families that are dealing with some brokenness. Maybe there's some loved ones or some sons and daughters that have fallen away. Maybe your family is in a broken place. Maybe you yourself are a product of that brokenness and you're trying to become whole. Maybe throughout this series when we talked about unpacking the bags, you still haven't done that. Can y'all unpack for a minute uh, the work that was worth the work? Yeah, the work is, is really worth it, you know. But what has to happen is each person has to look at themselves, you know, before you can unpack all that in your life. You got to deal with your own issues and your own struggles. And I think that's the most important thing that we need to know as a society. Most people don't look at themselves, they look at the other person. 
you know, because I kept looking at Tracy, well, she's this and she's that. And God said, well, the Holy Spirit used to convict me and say, well, what about you? <laughs> you know, and it wasn't until I started identifying my shortcomings and started dealing with them, then I could become the husband that God yeah. wanted me to be yeah. and the father that God wants you to be because we all come from somewhere. And if we pretend like we don't come from somewhere, we can't get anywhere, you know, and the storms of life are real and important. You know, and I always tell people, either you're in a storm or going through a storm, I mean, either you're in a storm or a storm is on the way and you're coming out of a storm. So that's part of life. And if you don't drown in the storm, you will get through those issues. And I think that's what we had to unpack in our life. I had to unpack my own insecurities, my own selfishness, you know, the way we think, you know, oh, you're a man, you're successful, you rich, you've been, you played Major League Baseball. And, you know, without the Holy Spirit guiding me, I'm nothing. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to be your leader, to guide you, because when Jesus was talking about that when he was ascending to heaven, he says, I'm going to send one to comfort her. He's going to teach you all things and remembers of me. But what is he teaching you? He's teaching you about you. You know, and when we focused on, because we used to, she used to focus on me, Daryl, 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 Daryl. God says, when you going to be, when you going to leave Daryl alone? Let me take care of him. <laughs> and, and, then he was, you know, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me about focusing on my issues so I can heal. Because we, we want to look at everybody else's issues, but we don't want to look at our own issues. And it brought, you know, it, it brought our family together. We didn't preach to our kids. Mm. They're all, they all older and, you know, college and this and that. We lived the life of Christ, and they saw us live the life. They saw what Christ looked like. Yeah, yeah that's right. And I, I experienced that. Because my dad went from following people home and beating them up in their own driveway to chaotic and alcohol and addictions and just never around. My mom struggling, wondering where he was, going out, checking the front grill to see if there was grass and debris because she assumed he had driven off the road or hit somebody. And so to see him go from brokenness to breakthrough, uh, it took a little bit. It took a little bit for my mom to believe, is this real? For my brother, my sister, and I to see if it was real. For all the people that used to, he used to run with, that used to supply him with alcohol and drugs to see if it was real. But his integrity and character has, has outlasted all of it. So now your character and integrity has outlasted it. So now your kids are like, oh, okay. So dad is present now. Mom is present now. So Tracy, can you give a snapshot? It takes time because trust, that word trust, it takes time to build trust, and when it's broken, right? And our kids need to see, they needed to see that we were trustworthy, and that this walk, because there's so many empty promises that come along, I promise I'll never do it again. Your desire in you prom wants to promise to never do it again, but with lack of character, lack of healing, and lack of complete surrender to Christ, you're gonna do it again, because self-will is not enough. It's just that simple. So living this life, I was broken as an individual, Trying to get married and be whole doesn't work. So then I have a broken marriage. Now I have broken kids. This pattern of brokenness just keeps going and going and going and going and going. But Psalm 147.3 says that Jesus comes to heal the brokenhearted and to bind yes. up their wounds. But he has a specific pathway to healing. That's how good our God is. And it takes work. But pastors, there, is, there are miracles in the work. And every day you're working it through with Christ. You're experiencing miracles and difficulties at the same time. But at the same time, we have to remember we're winning you're winning the war. Every day you're getting up and you are sowing that life. Say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise because he's that good. He's that powerful. His powerful is coming through. Your kids are watching you. If you're not married, other people are watching you. So whether you're married, divorced, whatever season that you're in right now, it's our wholeness in God is what makes us a better half, whether it be in a marriage parenting, friendship, whatever relationship it is. It's my wholeness in God because now I'm searching, I'm seeking the right way to become whole and healed. He is the healer of the heart, but he has a pathway. So good. He has a pathway. But it, it fully takes, and you said it, he binds up the wounds, but one of the verses you mentioned last night was Galatians 2.20. Right. Because without fully recognizing that you have to be crucified, I think we have the verse 
says, I have been crucified with Christ. This line right here, I no longer live. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me and through me. And that's what makes you stay vertical. That's what makes you walk into a room and the atmosphere change. Yeah, that's good. And tell us how, I wanna hear on that topic, how your understanding of physical discipline, your understanding of yeah. how to be disciplined helped you understand about the spiritual discipline in the whole story of redemption. Yeah, well, I, I tell you, God is always speaking to you. Or it's just a matter, are you listening? Are you listening? You know, and that's what it is, because he's always speaking to you when you're in that quiet place with him. And I just remember when God was calling me to preach, I thought, man, you have the wrong guy, you know? <laughs> And he was like, no, I have the right guy. Uh, you know, I want that, I'm gonna turn that mess into a message. But I had to be disciplined and he spoke to me and said, well, you have to be disciplined in your walk with me just like you were when you were playing baseball. You were disciplined to train. Nobody had to tell you to get up and go train and be the best. You know, I used to run the bases, walk around the ballpark and tell myself I'm greater than anybody else by myself. So you have to do the same thing, you know, with the Lord, you know, and that's why that Galatians 2.20 is so, so important for you to understand that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Christ has to live in you. He has to rule and reign over your own personal life. You have to die of your flesh. You know, if you don't die of your flesh. So true. Yeah. And that's where I had to come to with the discipline. I had to let my flesh die. Well, they say, well, don't your flesh rise up? Yeah, you, the flesh always gonna rise up, but I tell the flesh, shut up, you stupid, you know? <laughs> because you have to learn how to talk to that. Right. If you don't talk to that, it will not move away from you. So I had to learn how to talk, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit to move the flesh out of the way and allow Christ to rule and reign over everything, my thoughts and my, my walk and what I do. And when he tell you, don't go left, don't look back, there's nothing back there, you know? He's trying to tell you, you know, to keep going forward because I have something forward. If you don't pay attention, you'll never become what God wants you to become. Good, that's so good. I love, that's good, you can clap. I love what Tracy says. Tracy says about, it's not, it's not Daryl Strawberry. You don't get to be standing in the power of Daryl Strawberry. You say it better than I do. So somebody asked him earlier, they were like, you won four World Series, where's all your rings? And she said, well, he, does, he doesn't live in the hall of fame. He lives in the hall of faith. Like, we, we say, he, he's a man of God. He's not just Daryl Strawberry. I was like, ooh, you got you a good lady. Well, yeah, of course, she straightened she me out. She keeps you humble. She well, does. she keeps me humble, and that's a yeah. good thing. You know, as I always tell the men, if you allow your wife to keep you humble, it'll keep you safe. That's good. Well, and it's important to know and understand, like, I don't rule and reign over him. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I see when the enemy's coming. Wow. I can see him. And I'm like, oh, not today, not tomorrow, not any other day, because we've been done through this right? too much. Yep. And we've lost too much. So when there's a different reaction that comes out of me, because I love my husband and he's the head of our household, and I know, and we all need to know that the enemy is after our men and the power of influence Come and on. the lead. It doesn't make us any ne less necessary. Ladies, we are just as necessary and just as important. Come on. But there is power in godly submission. And if you don't understand power, you know it is a dirty word. You, we need to learn it as Christ has it. Amen? Because when I rise up and he sees a change in my demeanor or a tone in my voice that is not normally there, it gets his attention. Because I'm not this nagging wife. I'm not this... Right. Uh, you know, pouncing all over. He knows danger's on the horizon. Something good is not happening here. And he knows that I love him enough yeah. to be able to speak the truth and be able to receive that in between a married couple. And that speaks to the healthiness in your relationship because you have the rhythm and the trust together to be able to know the way in which you respect him and you love her and you have that stability together. So when one of you is able to call on the other and say, hey, I feel this in my spirit, I feel from the Lord, it doesn't feel like you're picking at him, it doesn't feel like you're criticizing him, it doesn't feel like you're nagging, it feels like, oh, I trust this woman that God has yep. blessed me with, and you have that relationship because you know that you both know God. And you know what it does? It, it, it teaches you as a man how to safeguard yeah. your life. You know, a lot of guys think, well, I got this, I'm strong, you know, and you end up 
getting hit in the back of the head by the enemy because he's always lurking around. And if you think you got to, you have to do it by you. This is my covenant. Mm -hmm. This covers me. So I understand how to safeguard my life because I travel and I'm on the road all the time and doing ministry and everything. And, and you need, need to know that it's important that you have this strength behind you to be able to go forward. Yep. You don't have to do it on your own. You're, you're not alone. And when I'm on the road, I'm with my wife. That's just the way it is. You know, that's the way I live. You know, I already lived on the other side. You have to, you can't straddle that fence. You know, you got to act like the Christian that God has called you and appointed you to be, you know. And we, early on, we would have conversations and she's like, hey, there's a divine order. And this is for married couples and future. Just kind of make a note of this. But uh, she was like, you got to trust me if I, if I notice something off. There's no new demon factories, by the way. There's no new tricks in, the, in this world. The, the enemy isn't like, ooh, I've never tried this one. The same tricks that mess with David with Bathsheba and Delilah with Samson. This, there's no new demon factory. There's no new tricks that's messing with you. But she'll be like, hey, real quick, ooh, you're funny, but she, that girl giggled a little too much when you were talking. <laughs> Just, you, you're uh -huh. funny. Go ahead, sister, go you're ahead. You're funny, but not that funny. You know, just, just, I need you to know. And so when we were first married, so my Finley, she just turned 12. She rode with me this morning. And so we were driving and we were talking. I think we've shared this before, but we were, uh, she was pregnant with Finley and we were doing uh, like, a, like a leadership workshop at this church in the Midwest and there's five, 600 people in the room. And we're, I'm trying to eloquently speak about healthy marriages and divine order and love and respect and all this stuff. And she is very much with um, child. And, um, and she's- okay, He's saying I was very pregnant and it was not a graceful pregnancy. No, it was all, graceful. Y'all have heard me tell the story, it, so we'll let him it tell was it, graceful. see how he says it. And, and I'm trying to talk about our, the health of our marriage, and I'm like, I'm like a helium balloon. I'm like the visionary. I'm just always like this. And then I said, and she's like, you know the, you know the balloon that has the, whatever that, she's like the big weight that holds me down. He did. And he every did. lady in the room was like, okay, all right. <laughs> I'll fight there you in the parking lot boo. later. They went across the room and he yeah. lost them. They yeah, were I done. Lost the room. Conference was over. I lost the room. He lost all credibility in that moment, except I laughed because I knew what he meant. The Lord is gracious in relationship. He provides us with people in relationship, especially in marriage, when we are listening to the voice of the yeah. Holy Spirit that will complement our strengths, that will absolutely bring some stability to some of the things in us that just kind of wants to fly off the handle a little bit. And I can admit that I will pull him back down to center at times. It didn't, but he wasn't he, calling me out for being a heavy pregnant lady no, no, in that moment. No, 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 I would never do that. Never. Um, but you have to heed the warning. And sometimes God will place those relationships, Proverbs 27, 17. It might be with a band of brothers right now. It might be a group of ladies. You have to heed to the warnings of the Holy Spirit through relationship. And if it's in a marriage situation, I mean, yeah, but you, you, no, 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 she's innocent. Y'all, her shorts are so short, you confused it for a belt. Like, she's probably not on the right assignment. I can, care, I can guarantee she's not. Right. Let me help anybody. Yeah, no. <laughs> but you have to recognize the patterns and the tricks of the enemy and recognize when God has godly voices and godly relationships and covenant relationships in your life. So watching the redemptive grace of the Lord and watching how he's healed. So you're traveling now. Obviously, you're still representing uh, who you used to be, but also with a godly, uh, polished pattern now. Uh, it's amazing watching. You were saying last night, there's people that were like, oh, you're still doing this Jesus thing. Yeah, because it's not just a thing. It's not just an accessory I put on. It's the relationship. So yes, you still have the accolades of World Series and home runs and New York Mets Hall of Fame. You have all of that. But now you're getting up in front of people saying, hey, I once was lost. I once was blind. You're a two-time uh, cancer survivor. Man, God has healed and, and restored health to your body. I mean, literally... A miracle in motion. You have a book out. Can you talk about that really quick? And then I know you have a book. And then y'all just released a marriage book together. 
So can you plug it real quick? I, I, I was mad at y'all for not bringing it because our church would have bought all of it. Sorry. But let them know about it. Sorry. You can go to findingyourway.com. So we have a marriage book that we wrote several years ago called The Imperfect Marriage, Help for Those Who Thinks it, Think It's Over. And I have a book coming out October 11th called The Courage to Heal, Overcoming Your Habits, Your Past, and Your Pain. It's right here. We got them on the sides. Yeah. Right there. And then Daryl's book up there. Why are the books important? God calls us to write them because they're tools. We only have have 10, 20 minutes here. So people walk away with, okay, how did you overcome all the adulteries? How did you overcome the addictions? How did you get to a place where you are reconciled with your children now and you learn to love each other again? And how did you stop hating each other and hurting each other and just shredding each other apart in your family and even as an individual? So these books, whether you're married or not, obviously the marriage book, yes, but the the first part of the marriage book is all about the me because there's no problems in marriage it's the problems in the people that bring the problems into the marriage and that's the difference amen so it's the journey of freedom I love it. Um, the courage to heal is the new book that I have coming out it's the courage it's it's the freedom that freedom how do I get that freedom in me and then also how do you live free loving someone that's still living in darkness how do you love them without losing yourself so good. What would you two say to the person that is struggling to leave the life of sin and step into the freedom of Jesus? Jesus? Because how often it is that we walk in the freedom of God, step into the freedom of God, but we hear the enemy saying, you're not good enough. You can't be this Jesus guy. You've, you've done too much stuff. You've, you've wronged too many, too many ways. How do you walk in the freedom of God every day? Well, I think the most important thing for all of us, we got to constantly saturate ourselves in the word of God because it transforms you and it renews you and it helps you through the struggles that you have. Uh, it's not an overnight miracle to get out of sin and victory. You know, it's a process to be able to go through that and get out of that. But you have to download the word inside of you because you have to be able to fight the enemy with something. If you don't have anything to fight the enemy with, you know, he's just going to laugh at you and you're going to keep doing the same thing. And just like so many guys, you know, they were wondering, like all the players I played with and people, and they, they were like, well, Daryl's just a little too much Jesus now, you know, but, but he'll be back. You know, they thought, well, he'll be back. Yeah. It's been 20 years since I've been walking this walk, you know. That's uh, cool. Yeah. That's fantastic. They don't, because they don't realize, you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I can't get to the new if I'm holding on to the old. See, this is what happens to so many people. They hold on to the old life. Of, I could have, should have, would have. I could have, should have, would have, what? You know, yep. God is moving you forward every day, you know, and so he has something new for you every and, day. And what I love, even last night, I saw joy, like I saw excitement and passion rise up in you about the new, because we're, we're all guilty of this. Uh, maybe you were guilty of this, where it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I walk with the Lord, <sighs> read my Bible every day, but woo. You could have seen me back then. I'm telling you, I could dance the night. I had a fever, and the only prescription was to dance. Like, and you almost talk about the past as the glory days, but then God got a hold of me, and I go to bed at 8, 8 p.m. now, and I have no joy. And No, but to see the passion, to see you go from darkness to light, to see how God, there's no enticing attractional pull you back to the world. And people will say like, well, if you, if you didn't enjoy sin and you weren't doing it right. No, no, that is the tactics of the enemy and the redemption right. of God says, no, 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 there's something so much better and y'all get to live that. But now. you know one thing, this is what my wife had said one time, you can pick your sins, but you cannot pick your consequences. Ooh. Of course you did, Dr. Tracy. Mike. Well, the Lord I mean, we me never, <laughs> we Lord never think me. about the consequences. No one ever thinks about that. But there's a price to be paid for that. Yes. You know, you're going to pay it some kind of way. We all have to. You know, the good thing, I mean, I paid it through sickness. I paid it through addiction. I, um, you know, I ended up in a Florida State prison with a T17169. But see, when God touches your life, yeah. you don't even, that old life don't even exist. That person is dead. You know, he never has to come up again, you know? I love it. So good. 
I want Tracy to speak to, though, I think sometimes in relationship, it is easy for the person, maybe not easy, but when the person finds the freedom of Jesus, sometimes those in relationship that know the T17169 are able, they have a hard time letting you free of your past, letting you walk in that freedom because they're still holding you bound with some unforgiveness. Wow. What would you say to them? Right. That's dangerous. I mean, Galatians 2.20. Yeah. Well, if we die to the past, I mean, it's the greatest freedom that we ever have. So here's, I want to distinguish between two different things, though. There's a big difference if he's still living in the past. Then I still have to safeguard myself and love him through boundaries so I'm not hurt. But if that past behavior is past behind, then that's a problem within the person. That person needs to go seek Jesus and say, heal my heart. You're still not healed from the hurt that happened between the two of you. And you're still making the person pay. That would be like me making this powerful, amazing man of God. I wouldn't be able to enjoy the amazing husband that he is today. Freedom in Christ, there's nothing like it. Get out of sin. I'm sorry I waited so long. My God in heaven, there's power, there's healing, there's Let's peace, go. there's passion, there's love, yeah. there's restoration. Come on, somebody. All day long. Come on. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love the one scripture that was on my heart so much for the two of you because I see it in your testimony so much and it blesses me so much as Isaiah 61 verses one through three says the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. And this is the part that gets me every time. And it says to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Amen. 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 That is what our God does because of his redeeming grace. And that's so important, Jackie. Thank you for sharing that. And it's so important for people to understand knowing the word of God brings you joy yes. and brings you peace. Amen. You know, his peace that surpasses all understanding. He gives it to you by knowing the word of God. You know, and that's, I think that's the struggle with so many people. They will not pick up their Bible. Yeah. You know, they will come to church and then they'll leave and then they'll not go back and study, you know, what the Word of God is saying for themselves so God can reveal himself. God cannot reveal himself to you if he does not know you. So good. So good. So good. Most of the time, I, I, we, we hear, you said it a moment ago, but God is always speaking always speaking, but there's distractions in life and there's things that try to muddy the waters of our ability to hear it. But where he is always speaking, you don't have to hear his audible voice. He's not like, Linda, you're like, oh, who has that? Uh, he, he'll speak to you through his word every time. So I haven't heard the voice of God in a while. Open up your Bible. I, I haven't felt the presence of God lately. Do the first 20 challenge that we talk to you guys about almost weekly. Five minutes in the word, five minutes in worship, five minutes in prayer, and then five minutes of simply remembering all that he's done. Because when you look back at all that he's done, it makes you grateful for where you are right now. And then you'll have faith for there. Because when you have faith for there, God will get you through and continue to grow you right here. So four weeks of our relationship series, there's four takeaways. Red, can you give it to him? Well, I believe if we start back, that's Red. He's me. Most of the time he calls me Big Red. It wasn't just when I was pregnant, y'all. He still calls me <laughs> It's unbelievable. <Big> Red. <laughs> They're going to throw me off the stage. It is factual. And it has become a wonderful, lovely term of endearment. I'm like, yes. Yeah, is anybody chew red. the Big Red gum? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody? Okay. Leave that out of the next service, if you don't mind. It's in there. It's part of our story. So the first 
The first thing we want you all to take away is that yeah, write healthy, this down if you're taking down notes. Healthy relationship starts with a foundation of friendship. We started there at the very beginning. I know that the strawberries would concur and agree with all of these. The second one is that a healthy relationship requires you to unpack your bags. We learned about that early in the series, but I love it because both of you have said that in another way and another shape and another form. And it's easy to hear it, but we have to apply it. Yes. Uh, after Pastor Tim was here, I literally went home and started thinking about it. We have to go and identify what's in our bags and then be honest about it. Sort through your stuff, unpack it, and put it away. So go back, watch those first two weeks, and then week three, this is the third takeaway. And number three is a healthy relationship grows when you listen more than you speak. Eee. Amen? Amen. When you listen more than you speak, especially if your spouse is walking in redemption, they are walking in the forgiveness of Jesus. They need you to listen to their heart. They need you to hear instead of judging where they are or where they may not be. Same and thing for four. all relationships. And number four, finally, a healthy relationship depends upon singularly the, the sorry, the redemption of Jesus. A healthy relationship depends upon the redemption of Jesus. We have to walk in the redemption of God before we can ever be healthy. In and we pair that with Psalms 130, verse 7. It should be on the screen. It says, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. Okay. Here's what I want to do. Can you guys, um, actually, I'm going to direct it to uh, Tracy. Can you, guys, can you pray um, just over single folks, single and confident, single and searching, single and complicated, uh, maybe widowed, widowers, those walking through family dynamics, maybe married but broken, maybe married and healthy, but can you just pray a blessing? Uh, and I know this is the connection from both of you, but just speak a blessing and prayer over our house before we wrap today. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, as we have so divinely praised you and your word, your word says that you came to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up their wounds. So I pray for surrendered hearts in this house, Lord God, to chase after you and not to run from you. Father, I pray that their eyes are open and that they have an understanding that you're trying to love them and heal them and not hurt them. Father, I pray for those who are caught in sin right now, again, for them to open their eyes and know that you're calling them into freedom, calling them into healing. And Father, I pray pray a blessing over each and every person here, Father, knowing that when we follow you, you are the God of all. You supply every need. You know every detail of every heart inside of this house that we couldn't possibly as humans know. So Father, I thank you and praise you that you care about every detail, every person, every situation, that you are the God of rescue, restoration, redemption, healing, power, peace. You are the God of all. So I confess and I declare that you are the divine, holy, most powerful one. And Father, may we open our entire lives to you and walk boldly in who you are. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, can y'all stand to your feet and honor the strawberries for being with us this weekend? Come on. Yeah. Oh, no. You can't make any astro comments. They won't let you back for the next two services. <laughs> hey, can we lift our hands towards heaven for a moment? God, we are so honored to be in your presence. You have been so kind. And God, just backing and following up to that prayer, if there's anything in our lives, God, that's needing to be surrendered all throughout this series, God, whether it's the moment where we realize, man, friendship and us being a friend is key. Second, God, we gotta identify and unpack our bags. If it's a not listening enough and just not pausing and being patient in the process of communication or God today, maybe it's a redemptive issue. Maybe God, we need restoration in our families or our marriages. God, I pray today that as we posture ourselves in a position of surrender, God, that you would heal and restore. God, that you would put grace and peace on broken hearts, that you would heal journeys and stories. Maybe there were people watching online or in the room that connected with Tracy's story of being a victim when she was young and trying to carry those wounds and 
finding other areas, God, to fill those voids. God, I pray today for your healing power to put stitches where there's been Band-Aids, that there's miracle working power that's healing hearts and minds and mental stability and physical bodies. Now you can put your hands down for a moment with every eye closed if you're here today and you'd say, Daniel, Jackie, the truth is I need redemption. I need a savior. The reason we do all of this, the reason we show up early and the team rehearses and we're ready to lead worship and we turn on the air conditioning, we set up chairs and we make coffee and we do all that we do is because we believe that people matter to God so they matter to us. If you're here today and you're the first of two invitations and you'd say, Daniel, I don't know Jesus as my savior. Jackie, today I wanna know him for the very first time. The truth is we don't pray prayers at Hope City for just symbolic reasons. We pray because Romans 10 verse nine and 10 says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. He hung on a dead tree for us, died, took every sin, every struggle, every issue that we would ever have. He hung on the cross for us because he said we were valuable. Then he rose again on the third day so that we could walk in abundance and freedom. If you wanna give your life to Jesus for the first time, I'm gonna to count to three in just a moment. Just lift up your hand and say you're talking to me or maybe you're the second invitation. You say, Daniel, my story is messy. I used to walk with the Lord, but I fell away. I'm caught in the figure eight cycle. I do good on some days and I fall back into selfishness and I'm living reckless. And today I wanna to rededicate my life to Jesus. Whether you're the first invitation or you're the second. One, today's my day. Two, Daniel Jackie, you're talking to me. Three, if that's you, would you lift up your hand? I'm looking all over the room. One, two, three, I see you. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I see you. 10, I see you. 11, back here, I see you. I see you over here. I see you back here. Come on, Hope City. Let's just make some noise and give God praise for all of our family that would say today's the day. You can put your hands down. We're gonna all pray this as family today. Whether you lifted your hand or not, say this out loud. Say, Jesus, it's me. Today's my day where everything changes because you've written victory in my story. I repent for every sin, every struggle, every issue. I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you for loving me, for choosing me, even when I went my own way. From this moment on, I choose to live for you. You are my Father, you are my Savior, you are my Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise today? Let's go.